Have you ever struggled to create a weather shader in Unity? Well, fret no more, just for you, there is an easy solution. I'm Anzi, and in this video, I will get you step by step on how to easily create a weather shader in Unity using Shadowgraph. Let's dive into it. Okay, so here we are in Unity 2022 with a very basic setup that you can get when you create a new URP project. The first thing we're gonna do is to create a plane. So go and create game object, 3D and plane. And let's call it water. Okay, great. Now we can create our shader. So right click, create, shader graph, URP, and lead shader graph. Let's call it water. Before we jump into it, let's create a material. So right click, create, and material. Once again, let's call it water and drag and drop it into the plane. Awesome. Now let's open the shader. Okay, great. I'm gonna go full screen. Perfect. Since we're gonna have some movement in our shader, the first thing we need is the time node. All right. On the water surface, we're gonna have some foam. So let's create a property. It's gonna be a float and let's call it foam speed. Let's multiply it by time. And let's put the default value as one. For the foam shape, let's use a Vernoy node. And let's connect it to the angle offset. Awesome. We can also increase or decrease the density. So for that, let's create another property. Form scale. Let's drag and drop it and connect it. Don't forget to add a default value. like five. Now let's add a power node. It will act as a mask. So once again, let's create another property for mask and let's connect it. I will put 5 as the default value. Now we need some color, so let's multiply this node by color. And of course, we're gonna set it as a property. And for the default value, I'm gonna choose some blue. Great. I will also suggest you to put the mod as HDR. Now we need the base color. So let's use the add node. Just like before, we're gonna use a property. And set the default value as a blue.
once again put the mod as HDR and let's connect it to the base color. Great. Let's save the asset and let's check what it looks like. In Unity, select the material and select the shader we just created. So shader graph and water. Great. As you can see, it's a little bit laggy, but if you hit play, it will be a lot better. Okay, not bad. Let's play a little bit with the scale and the mask. Great, I think it's a good starting point. Let's try to simulate some light on the water or some kind of foam but smaller on the surface of the water. So let's reuse the time node and it's gonna be almost more or less the same logic as before but with some different values. So another multiply node. This time we're gonna multiply it by another property. Let's call it light speed. Now let's create another Voronoi. Don't forget to add a default value on the speed. And now we need the scale. So let's add the light scale property. And let's put the default value as 13. All right. As you can see, it's exactly the same, but with different values. Unlike before, instead of a power node, we're gonna use a step node. And just like before, we're gonna use a property for the mask. Okay, great. Now let's add some colors. Of course, we're gonna use a property. Put the mod as HDR and select the color. Now we must merge the foam and the light, so let's use an add mod. Great. And let's add the result into the main color. All right, that's already a lot better. Let's save it. And let's check what it looks like in the game. Okay, let's hit play. Let's modify a little bit the material, so the scale. That's better. Let's increase the speed. All right, and the mask.
awesome we can see that there is obviously a lake of transparency to fix that go into the shader in the graph inspector select the surface type and change it from opaque to transparent this will allow you to modify the alpha and we can set something like I don't know 0 0.8 save the asset and if we go back we can see a little bit more of transparency which make it look a little bit better than before another thing missing from our shader is some movement we need some waves here let's go back into our shader I will reorganize a little bit the graph All right, now we have some space to create the movement. Okay, so to begin with, let's create a time node. And just like before, we're going to create a property. It's going to be wave speed. And let's multiply them. As a default value, I will use 0.01, okay? And now we are going to modify some kind of textures. So now let's create the, the shape of the wave. To do so, I will use a gradient noise. So here it is. And what I need is to modify the UV. Let's modify the UV by using a tiling and offset node. And what we are going to do is to create some kind of movement using the offset to create some waves. So since we want to do that over time, let's connect them both. And as you can see, it is slowly moving. If I increase the speed, it's going faster. Okay, nice. Now we want to modify the shape based on that. So I create a normal vector. and I will multiply it by the noise. And what I will do is to add the word position and voila. Now you can connect this node to the vector. All right. So as you can see in the preview, it's chaotic. Let's save the asset and check what it looks like in the game. And voila, we have some waves. You can play with the settings if you want more speed, for example. What we can do also is play with the scale. So let's create a property, wave scale. I'll set five as the default value and I will connect it to the scale of the gradient nose. Save the asset again. And now you can play with the noise. So 
if you want bigger waves or, or smaller ones. I like to have it very small, so it's just simple movement and not big waves on the screen. All right, I think that looks good now. Currently, every object in the water is transparent, but in the same way. It will be nice to have some kind of depth where objects that are really deep in the water are less visible. So let's fix that. First thing we're gonna need is the screen position node. I will set the mod as row. And I will split every channel. What we want in our case is the alpha channel. To have some kind of control over the depth, I will add a property. It's called depth and I will drag and drop it here. You can set zero as the default value, doesn't matter. On the other side, what we'll need is the screen depth. And we are going to use the far plane property from the camera. Now what we want is to subtract this node, but the one below. We don't need the preview. All right, so it's a little bit less messy. Now let's multiply this result by a string property. Alright, and let's clump the value to make sure that it will be between 0 and 1. Then use the lerp node. and you can reuse the main color that we created before. All right, and let's split the lerp node. And use the alpha channel. All right, let's save the asset. Alright, so the material seems a little bit broken, but just modify these properties a little bit, so the string. And as you can see, it came back. What's nice about that is that if I take the example asset and I put them a little bit below, you can see them less and less. We can also adjust that by using the depth. As you can see, the more I increase the depth, the more I can see it. And I can also increase the strength so I have a total control over the water aspect which is really nice all right that's all for this video as you can see you can create multiple kind of water with this shader so I hope it will be helpful and that you will create amazing water environment for your game so thanks for watching and see you in the next video